Hey everybody, I'm Mike. And I'm Chana. And welcome to our channel, Mike's Philippine Retirement. Now let's get to today's video. So the topic for today is going to be money. I'm not going to do a February budget. You guys can always go back and look at my November budget, my December budget, my January budget. You can live on 1500 U.S. a month here in the Philippines. I'm not talking about people coming here for a vacation. I'm not talking about people who are coming here for a two-month test to see if they like it here in the Philippines. I'm talking about people who are making the commitment to live here, retire here in the Philippines. So I'm going to break this down into three different parts. I hope you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now the first money you need is your startup money. This is the section of money that I believe you need when you first get here to start your life. It's just like in the States or in Canada. When, when you move from Cleveland, Ohio to Las Vegas, Nevada, you have to take money with you to get a place to live, buy furniture if you don't have, cover expenses until you find a job or your income starts flowing in. You got to have startup money. You can't walk into the Philippines and have $1,500 in your pocket and say to yourself, every month on the 1st, I'm going to get $1,500 and I'm going to make this work. That $1,500 budget, which we'll talk about later, is, is for later. But when you first get here, the first couple months you need to get situated, you need to become an expat that lives here and you're situated and you have everything you need to live a comfortable life. So the first things you're gonna need, you're gonna need a plane ticket. I would try and get my ticket about 60 days out. I don't know when is the best time to buy a ticket for the very best price, but you're moving your whole life here to the Philippines. I know every dollar matters. You really don't want to waste money, but uh, I didn't spend a lot of time trying to save 20 bucks on a plane ticket. The next part of your journey, when you get here and you land in Manila, or Cebu and you go through customs is the continuation of your journey to your final destination. If you have a spot picked out where you want to live, if you've chosen Cebu City, if you've chosen Davao, Dumaguete, wherever you have chosen, there's a continuation of the flight. Have as many things paid for in advance as possible. Have your continuation flight to your final destination already prepaid. Now when you arrive in the city of your choice, is your Airbnb, you prepaid that I would hope for 30 days or, or whatever amount of time you decided that you're going to stay in one. Or a hotel. The hotel would prepay at least a week. Don't be in such a hurry to get here and say you're going to find a house to live in or a quality apartment in the first one or two days that you're here. The vast majority of people who get off the ferry or the plane and get the first place they see, they end up regretting getting that place. You're gonna want a house or an apartment in an area of the city that suits what you need to do. You're gonna need close to the beach or close to the mountains, close to town, next to sports park, whatever it is that you like, you're going to have to be close to that. So I would prepay as much as I could before I left the States. Now in, in the startup money, you're going to need money to find a place to live. Now, if you're staying in a hotel, like I recommend a hotel or an Airbnb, while you look for a place to live, the price range should already be in your head. I don't want to pay more than 25,000 pesos or or 600 US or 400 US, whatever that amount is, you're gonna need three times that. You're gonna need the first month's rent in advance and you're gonna need two months deposit. And then uh, that's cash. You gotta, you gotta pay for that before you move in. So you need cash, you're gonna to go to the bank and transfer it into pesos. And let's just say you get an apartment at at 500 a month 
So you're gonna need $1,500 just to live. Just to find a place to live. And that's just getting the keys, getting the lease signed, and getting moved in. Now when you arrive here, how, how are you gonna get around to see these apartments and houses that you might wanna rent? Well, either you're gonna take a trike everywhere, you're gonna rent a car and a driver, you're gonna rent a motorbike, or you're gonna buy a motorbike. The vast majority of people will end up getting a motorbike. And when you get here, the rent will be anywhere between 5,000 pesos and 8,000 pesos to rent a motorcycle for one month. Now you have a motor, the money for a motorcycle and you have money for an apartment or a house. You have the three months uh, equivalent for that. So now you found the apartment, you found your house, and you give them the, the amount of money that's agreed to on deposit and rent. As soon as you get into the house, there's things you're going to need. You're going to need gas for the stove. You're going to have to go out and and buy cooking gas, and that can run anywhere from a thousand pesos up to fifteen, sixteen hundred pesos, and it's going to last you four to five months. But you're going to have to buy that. Hopefully, the apartment you're renting or the house you're renting has a stove. You have to buy a cooking stove. If the apartment doesn't come with dishes, glasses, cooking utensils, you have to go buy all that stuff. White plastic plates, 10 inch, they're running about 65 pesos each, 85 pesos each, depending on this, where you buy them from and the styles. Same thing with glasses. Are you gonna buy glass glasses? Are you gonna buy plastic glasses? Uh, how about your coffee mugs? You're gonna have coffee? So you gotta buy a coffee pot. What else you need in your kitchen? You need a frying pan, a cooking uh, pot. You're gonna need a hot water maker for your instant oatmeal or a cup of tea. Many things you're gonna need in your kitchen. You're gonna need the utensils to cook. You're gonna need a spatula to flip your eggs. You're gonna need a pair of tongs to flip your uh, chicken breast over. You're going to need a, a ladle in case you have soup. You need the plates to eat off of, a bowl to eat your soup out of. Hopefully the place comes with a refrigerator. A lot of places are totally unfurnished here. They have nothing, and you have to supply the refrigerator and the stove. Me, if I was coming here to live, the very first place I get, I'd have it as fully furnished as possible as fully furnished as possible because you can slowly build up everything you need but just in case you you want an unfurnished apartment or an unfurnished house you tr you're looking for as cheap as possible rent and you're going to supply a lot of your own things you're going to live here so you're going to move and you're going to take them with you which is not easy so you have to buy all these things so you have to sit down and think what do I need in my kitchen. What do I need to cook with? And you're going to say, oh, I'll go out and eat every day. Well, a lot of places aren't open until later in the morning. Uh, what if you're hungry at 5 a.m.? You want coffee at 5 a.m.? Even if you live in downtown Dumaguete, you still got to wait for the McDonald's to open and get a cup of coffee. And places are closed at night. What if you get the munchies in the middle of the night? Me? I'm with Janet, but before I met Janet, I liked cooking. I would cook my dinner in the evening about 6, 7 o'clock, just before dark or right at dark, sit down and eat, relax, do whatever I had to do. Eating at home was easy. Just like in the States, eating at home is convenient. You eat at the time you want to eat. You eat as much as you want to eat. You don't have to pay for a second plate of food, but if you're really hungry and you want more than they normally serve. So think about what you need in your kitchen and don't be sitting there saying, I don't need anything. I'm not gonna cook. Very few people are gonna be like that. What are you gonna do on a day when it rains all day long? And then in your house, you're gonna need all your bathroom uh, items. 
you're going to need towels. So br bring a couple towels if you can. If you're traveling light, you buy them here. You can buy towels here, shower curtains, uh, floor mats, loofahs. You can get everything here. So whatever you don't bring, you have to buy. You get into your bedroom. If you're running a furnished place and uh, the mattress is used, me, I'm buying a new mattress. If, I'm st if I have a one-year lease or six-month lease, I'm buying a new mattress. I don't know what's going on in there. I don't know about anything that happened on that mattress. That's just the way I am. It's the one thing when I rent that bothered me. Even staying in the hotels, I didn't sleep under the covers. I slept on top of the covers, brought my own blanket, and had that between me and the hotel sheets in the States. The cost of mattresses aren't cheap here. And what if you want some pillows? You want firm pillows. They have pillows here that are so soft it's like you're laying on concrete, you know, your head goes right through the pillow. They're not cheap. They're not cheap. So everything you need in the bedroom, sit back and think, what do I need in the bedroom? You're going to need a, a couple sets of sheets. You're going to need a couple pillows. I don't know what you need, but that would be the basic starts for me. I'd, I'd need two sets of sheets, pillowcases couple pillows and a good mattress all that costs money now you get into the living room if the house has a, a couch that you can sit on and you can enjoy everything from there it has a TV has a remote you're good to go but you gotta pay for that cable you gotta pay for that internet it's gonna be 1500 pesos or more per month and you're going to have to pay for your electricity. And you're going to have to pay for your water. All these are part of your budget, I know, later down the line. But when you first move in, that water bill might be here in a week. It might be here in a couple days. So you have to be prepared for all these things. Did you bring good walking shoes? I wore sneakers. People said they wear flip-flops and sandals everywhere. Well, I find the puddles disgusting here. You go in the streets, you know, you have the, uh, who knows what's been in the, in the puddle. I don't want to step in a puddle, stagnant water, and, and get that on my, on my feet. It's bad enough I get them on my sneakers, but I'm more comfortable with sneakers. They don't fall off. Uh, they're easy to walk around the town with. Everybody wears them. You, you won't be an oddball wearing a pair of sneakers. So I brought good shoes with me. But if you didn't, are you prepared to buy? Other startup money you're going to need. Immigration. After 30 days, you got to go back to immigration. you got to start paying uh, your immigration fees every month as you extend your visa. ACR card. A friend of mine just went down and got his ACR card and uh, extended his visa six months. And it was 13,000 pesos. Every time somebody goes there, it's a different, uh, different amount. So be prepared for that. Now the scooter. You're going to keep running the scooter or are you going to end up buying a scooter? You're going to have $1,000 with you to go buy a good used scooter? Or are you going to go and want to buy a brand new one and you don't have issues with the title? And that could be about $1,800 plus if you get a 125 If you want something that's a 150 or better, it's going to be close to 3000 U.S. Know what you're going to do for transportation when you get here. Think of your transportation. Are you always going to be paying for a, a jeepney? Or are you always going to be paying for, for a trike? And the trike, if you want to be the solo passenger, if you want an exclusive ride where it's just you, that costs way more. If you just get on the trike and pay the 20, 25 pesos, but if you just want to be the only passenger and you want him to take you to... Uh, downtown Dumaguete or out by the beach you're going to pay a couple hundred pesos if not more all this is in your initial startup as you find the city you want to live in you find the place you want to live in depending on your transportation the cost of a motorbike 
which which can run anywhere from, in my opinion, a thousand dollars up to three thousand. And the cost of your rent for to move into a place, the first month's rent and two months deposit, that could be fifteen hundred US. And the cost of a motorbike could be, like I said, from a thousand to three thousand. That's twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred dollars in startup money there. The items you're going to need in your house, in your apartment, it could run anywhere from $100 to $500 to $1,000, depending on what you need. Only you will know what you need, what you're going to be comfortable with. But you need that startup money to get you going here, get situated, get comfortable. And then once you're comfortable in your house, you're comfortable in where you live, you're comfortable in how you get around the city. Now you can set your budget. You're going to have expenditures every month that are going to repeat themselves. You're going to have your electricity every month. You're going to have your gas every month. You're going to have your cable television. You're going to have your fiber optics internet. All these things are just going to be reoccurring bills. Your eating habits are going to be pretty well situated then. You're going to know if you like to go out, how often you like to go out. Or if you're cooking at home more often than not. A lot of guys just like to cook breakfast at home. Other, other guys like to go out in the morning and meet people and have coffee and, and socialize. These are your personal habits and these will determine your budget. Are you with a girlfriend? Does she have kids? Or are you going to be dating? Or are you one of these guys who have told me, I come over and I really don't need anybody. I'm at that stage of my life where I'm happy to be alone and I don't need a steady girlfriend. Just date occasionally. Dating's expensive. If, you, if you're going to have a regular girlfriend, there's other startup things with her. She's going to be missing some things that you, you'll want to give her. Some guys buy engagement rings for their girlfriends when they get here. Me, I bought my girlfriend a motorbike. And she didn't have a dress uh, for an event we went to, so I had to buy that. And if they got kids, you got to be prepared for the cost of kids when you start at money. They're gonna, they might need shoes. They might need clothes. More school supplies. But once you get situated and you're in an everyday routine, this will all become part of your budget. Do you need to buy medication when you get here? Your initial cost to go see the doctor, even though it's cheap to go visit a family doctor, it's an it's a additional cost. So I had all these things set aside in my startup. My startup was over 6000 cash that I brought, and I had access to another five for my startup. So my startup was 11000 I didn't use it all, but I used a lot of it. And once I got situated, I got everything I need now. There's no big items I have to go buy. Just my day-to-day -day expenses. Go grocery shopping. A lot of the guys go just once a month. You know, they take 25,000 pesos, 500 bucks. They have a freezer at home. And they buy all the meats they need for the month. They buy as much as they can for the whole month. And they have a good girlfriend. They'll help them stretch it. A single guy I don't think will do that. But a guy with a family will. So, so your budget is going to be according to your, your spending habits. And what, what do you do? Do you need to have two or three beers a day? Do you need to go out and have dinner every night out? Do you need to go out for lunch every day? Do you want to leave your home every day and go out and explore? All that costs money. It's all doable. It's all fun to do. It's just something to help you set your own budget. So many people ask me, Mike, I got $1,200 per month. Mike, I got $1,500. I got $1,800. I got $4,000. Some people, 1200 is plenty. Other people, 4000 is nowhere near enough. It all depends on your habits. 
depends on what you're going to spend your money on. Are you going to travel island to island every month? Is Dumaguete or wherever you choose to live going to be like a home base for you? And you're going to be here and then the 15th of every month you're going to take a two-week trip somewhere or a week trip. You're going to Behold, Boracay, Palawan, out to Thailand, Malaysia. You're going to take a trip to Vietnam to check it out. Are these things that you're planning to do? And they're not really budgetable things because the cost of travel changes every time you look up a plane ticket. Those are things where your startup money or your savings is going to help you do those things. I can't see putting $200 in an envelope every month and saying this is my travel budget money. I really believe your budget is the money you need to live month to month with your reoccurring bills every month. And that's your food, your housing, utilities. Everything else is extra. And I hope to God that if you plan your budget at $1,200 a month, that your income is more than that. So you're saving money every month. Why would you come to the Philippines to live with a low cost of living here and be losing money every month and not save money? Every month your savings is going down and down and down. Eventually it'll be all gone. But if you're living here, you should be saving something every month. Your savings should be growing. And there's nothing wrong with taking trips. I'm going to Cebu next week. I went to Behold a few months ago. But my income is far greater than my budget. So that money goes into my savings. It's my personal savings account back in the States. And it grows and it grows every month. Yours should be growing also. And I know not everybody is blessed with having, you know, a, a, a higher amount of Social Security or pension. Some of us are just at the low end. But still, you should be saving 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Your savings account should be going up every month there's no safety net here in the philippines there's no safety net when you run out of money you have no savings and you start tapping into your credit card and you start tapping into any kind of ability you have to borrow money there's going to be a time where you have to pay that money back and of course, there's many freeloaders out there. There are many people who owe money and then they just quit paying on it. That seems like American way sometimes. But that money's going to be gone and you're still going to have that twelve or 1500 a month coming in and that's all you have. And you're going to be able to get by. And if you don't have savings, the minute an emergency happens, If you use glasses and your glasses get broken, if you twist an ankle in one of these potholes on the road, you're riding your motorbike and a car hits you, and you sprain your ankle, twist your knee, and you got to go to the hospital and have it looked at, what are you going to do? You got to have savings. Now that savings rolls us over to the next part of your, your budget of your money that you need here in the Philippines. You need your startup money. You need your mu budget money. That's the money you make every month that comes into you every month. That's your income. And a large portion of that is your budget for your day-to-day -day expenses. A little bit of that is your savings. But this other end of it is the emergency fund. Now there's other YouTubers who are talking about this. And I'm gonna throw a shout out to Steve on the Philippine Info Channel. He was a big influencer to me coming here. You gotta have that emergency fund. 
you've got to have the ability to get out of town. You've got to have that ability to get on a plane and fly back to the States or to your home country. You can't be standing here hoping the embassy is going to get you back home. You have to be prepared for that. A death in the family. Somebody is hurt and you need to go back to see him. A loved one's in trouble and you got to go back. You have to have funds to get out of here. Also, what if you do get hurt? What if you have a slight stroke and you got to go to the hospital? What if your appendix burst? So many unforeseen things can happen. You're going up to check a waterfall and you're climbing down the, the mountain to go check out a waterfall and you slip and you fall. You go swimming in the ocean and who knows what you step on and all of a sudden your foot's infected. You get bit at night by something, a spider, or who knows what creeps in and bites you some night. And you have a reaction to it. You get an infection in your foot from a scratch. You need emergency money to go see that doctor. You need that emergency money to go see someone at the hospital to get this taken care of. Don't come here thinking you're a young man and you're going to withstand all these negative things that could happen to you. Because something negative will happen. Every day I talk to people who are riding their bikes. Oh, I had to lay my bike down today. Oh, I fell off my bike today. Even the experienced riders fall. Forget about those who don't have experience that fall. Now, you don't fall hard and going fast. Usually you just lay it over and you get a scrape or something, but what if your ankle gets caught underneath? You need to have money to go see the doctor. You need to go to the hospital to get it taken care of. You're not going to home remedy most of your problems. There's no way I would sit in my house with something that's infected, just putting some ointment on there, waiting for it to go away. And what if you get sick from food? You get a bad case of food poisoning, which is, could happen to anyone here. You go eat at some restaurant, and I don't care who owns it. I don't care if the top chef from South Korea is the cook there. What if they have a refrigeration problem that day? What if the food they bought had a refrigeration problem? You never know when you're going to get sick. You never know when you're going to get hurt. It comes from nowhere. It just happens. The locals deal with their medical problems here. But it's, they're local. They're, they're accustomed to this. Their parents have gone through it. Their brothers, their, their grandparents. It's like back home having the flu. Your mom knew how to take care of you. But here, you need to go see the doctor. You need to go in the hospital. And you know what you need when you go see the doctor or the hospital? You need money. You need insurance. You need that emergency fund to protect you. That is your only lifeline, is your money. Money will get you out of so many problems. You just don't know how valuable that emergency fund is. You don't know how peace of mind it gives you knowing you have access to, and I'm calling it thousands of dollars. You should have at least $10,000 in an emergency fund. If you have health insurance here in the Philippines and you're covered in the Philippines, that could go down a little bit. But you should have this money for emergencies. What if you get in an argument with someone here and get feared for your life and you just want to leave? You're going to leave everything that you have, that you bought here to leave for your own personal safety. You want to have the money and quick access to the money to get on that plane. 
Now, a lot of you guys say, oh, I have credit cards for this, I have credit cards for that. You have credit cards today, and you have credit today. What if they sniff that you're in the Philippines, and you've been here for a long time? Say you've been here a year and a half. And all of a sudden, they decide to decline that charge. Have access to real money. Make sure your credit cards are working all the time. Use them once in a while to keep them active and that they know you're here. I'm going to put a link to a video from Paul Old Dog New Tricks. And it's a video I'm going to make a comment on in the upcoming weeks. But it's going to show you a guy who came here. He came here with a pocket full of money. But it didn't last him long. It lasted nowhere near what he thought it would last. It's a great lesson to be learned for those of you coming over here. True stories of people who made big mistakes. Let their mistake be a lesson for you that you don't make that same mistake. No matter how much money you bring with you here, if you don't have income, if you don't have something replenishing that money, it's going to go fast. It's going to go fast. You come here with you know $100,000 at age 30, you're going to say, oh my God, that's plenty of money, but I don't have any other income. Well, every month you're taking, taking, taking. Soon you get down to zero. Then what do you do? You got to have a, an income along with the money you bring here. And that's going to be your pension, your social security. If you own a house, rent it out. Have a company manage it for you. And have them send you the profit from that. That's income. That's, that's money you can use to live here. You have to have an income. But if you're in retirement age, like the vast majority of us are, and you're getting your Social Security, you're getting your pension from the railroad, or you're getting your pension from the government. Some of these pensions are really great. They're high amounts. You've earned it. Come here and enjoy your life. But please have emergency fund. Please have a way out of here. And you can have the greatest insurance policy in the world in the U.S., And it will cover 100% of everything in the U.S. Find out what it's going to cover over here if you're here more than 90 days. If you're here more than 30 days. A lot of insurance plans, they don't cover you after a certain amount of days of traveling. And travel insurance is really expensive also. So look into your insurance plans. You know your personal health. You know your health better than anybody else you might not want to tell your your neighbor some of your problems you're not going to want to tell your neighbor your uh, physical limitations but you know what they are you know what medications you have you know what kind of history you have with your heart your blood pressure and your mental state be covered for those prepare for the worst and hope for the best. When you come here, if you have startup money, you have a monthly income coming in, and you have an emergency fund, you're going to come here with peace of mind. You're going to be relaxed. You're going to be able to find the best place to live. You're going to visit the best places that are for you. You're not going to be restricted on what you do, where you go, and how you do it, because you're prepared. You're prepared mentally because you want to be here. You're here. But be prepared financially. There's not a soup kitchen here that you can go walk to and get a meal today. Just like that guy in Paul's video. You want to be walking over to the neighbor and begging for a cup of rice? My God, a cup of rice is 10 pesos. In a restaurant, it may be 20 How much is 20 pesos? 
40 cents. And the man didn't even have money for a cup of rice. Come here and have an enjoyable life. Don't be the guy sitting here every morning wondering, where is he going to get some food? Where is he going to get some money? Be the guy that's here wondering, what's my next adventure? What's the next fun thing I'm going to do? That fun thing could be just a walk around the block. That fun thing could be a drive down to the beach. That fun thing could be a ride up into the mountains, into the clouds. But if you're financially prepared to live here, your life is going to be so, so much more enjoyable. Let, let your health, and this is another topic for another day, but you have to know your health. You have to know your limitations on health. There are some big guys here. I'm a big guy. You know, what am I, 5'10 and, and 225? There's some bigger guys. They know their limitations. And there's nothing wrong with coming here and knowing that you have limitations. Just know them. And be prepared for the negative things that could happen. If you're in bad health, you know you're going to have trips to the hospital, trips to the doctor. Trips to get medicine. Eighty percent of my audience is over fifty. Before you leave home and before you get here, know how to transfer your money. Before you leave home, go talk to your bank. Tell them you're going on a one-year vacation to the Philippines. Tell your credit card companies. I'm going on a trip for a year and I'm going to be in the Philippines. Have your mail taken care of. Way to talk on the phone to someone in the U.S. if you need be. I know you mentioned to me and I'm very weak on the phone. I did it all wrong, but my mail situation is solid. My banking situations are solid. My credit cards are solid. Communication with your banks. Communication to everybody you're going to need. And set up accounts, more than one for transferring money. If you're going to use Wise or Zoom or uh, World Remit or Remitly or Western Union, have more than one way to send yourself money. Even if it's just using your ATM card. Find out what the fees are from your bank. Find out what they're going to cover. Find out what the exchange rate is. Find out if there's any additional charges for international transfers. Foreign transaction fees. For changing your money from U.S. dollars to Filipino pesos. You should get yourself a whiteboard. I have one hanging on the wall. I'll put a picture of it on. Write everything down. Banks, credit cards, mail. That you've taken care of these things. How to transfer money. It's my passport up to date. All these things are so much easier to do when you're in the States and you can go talk to these people face to face or on a local phone call. You'd be over here in the Philippines trying to call your, your bank. One, the time difference. Two, they need to verify who you are. And if they didn't know you were traveling, you might have some difficulty with that. I don't know. Do your due diligence. Get everything taken care of ahead of time. Every question you have in your head about being here, Ask that question. Listen to YouTubers. Don't believe everything they say. And don't trust what they say is, is 100% right. But you can listen to them. They give you ideas. But you have to go and verify it. 
How do you stop your Medicare if you're traveling? If you're going to be in the Philippines for a year, are you going to pay your Medicare $170 a month for 12 months and not be eligible to use it? Call Social Security. Ask them. Well, they put it on hold while you're traveling. You might be surprised with the answer. Now, for those of you who stuck around me talking for this long, I had, in the last couple months, I had 18 people who have contacted me, email, PM, a messenger, and they wanted to talk to me. I set up a time. I got up really early because of the time difference, or I canceled an engagement, or I rushed home to be here when they called. Out of the 18 people, only one person called when they were supposed to. Only one person was available when they said they would be. I more than welcome any questions, email. I'll answer a question if it's not too in-depth, if it's not, you know, 40 different questions. But I'll answer a question here and there on the email. But if you want to talk about this, and you want to talk for a half hour, 45 minutes to an hour, I'll gladly do that. But I'm going to have to start charging for that service. Consultation fee, 25 bucks. So you're there. It's so easy to say, hey, Mike, uh, I'll talk to you Sunday morning, 3 a.m. I go, sure, I'll give you an hour of my time. And then I get up early. Janet gets up, makes coffee for me. I go pull the laptop up. Sit there and wait for the call. Doesn't come. I call them. Declined. Or they don't or they don't answer. So I need to have you guys to have a little skin in the game when you want me to spend my time talking to you. And I really won't put time limits on anything. I really want to help people. But I don't want to be taken advantage of either wasting my time sitting there waiting for someone to call who's not going to call or waiting for someone to pick up and they're not going to pick up. When an easy email back could be, I can't make it or I'm busy now, Mike, sorry, maybe next time, but just totally ignoring me. Too many different occurrences in a short period of time. So I'm going to start charging $25 for consultation. Uh, I'm going to call it $25 for an hour, but I wouldn't put, if the conversation's good and we're getting somewhere, there's no limit to the, to the time. I have a couple links for donations. Buy me a coffee, which is $5 donation on each click. And also I have PayPal, but I'd rather you did the buy, buy a coffee. It's, it's not a lot of money. It's easy. Uh, the fees aren't high. And I appreciate everybody who would donate and who has donated in the past. But coming to the Philippines, have your startup money. Have an income. And your income should be more than your monthly budget. Save money every month. And have an emergency fund. And you know what? where I got my emergency fund? When I sold my car, my truck. I had a 2021 Silverado, four-wheel drive. I sold that. And all that money I got for that truck, that's my emergency fund. When you start selling your stuff to move here, you can use that money for your emergency. But know before you make your plan to come here where you're going to get that emergency fund. Now, if you're only going to stay here six months boots on the ground, four months, two months, just to get the feel of the place. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. You can, look, you can stay in different Airbnbs because then I think you're going to be traveling around. I think you're going to come to Dumaguete, you'll go to Davao, you go to Cebu City, so you'll be traveling. And you're pretty well going to know the cost of flights, the cost of hotels in the area. Because you're at home now. You're going to look them up. Google them. Check Travel Velocity or whatever these different travel sites for package deals. But if you're coming here to live, you're coming here to retire, you're going to spend the rest of your life here. 
or a good portion of your life here. Prepay as much as you can before you leave home. Bring your startup money or have access to your startup money. Plan on a budget that's going to be less than the amount of money you make every month. Less than your income. Plan on putting some of that money in a savings, towards your savings, to grow your savings, and have that emergency fund. You gotta have an emergency fund. You gotta be able to get out of here. A lot of guys have met nice girls and they're having, they're happy and everything's going good. Then all of a sudden things head south. So they got to pack up and leave. But they don't have any extra money. They got to sit around and wait for the 15th of the month or the first of the month to get their pension check. Have that emergency fund. It's going to make your stay here better, so much more enjoyable. I can't harp on this enough. I cannot. I've met too many guys here in a short period of time that I'm here that don't have anything. And the old saying is, if I die, I die. Well, when we die, we do die. But my God, I don't want to die because of infection in my foot because I don't have the money to pay for the hospital to take care of it. I want to have the emergency fund. I have Janet with me. What if she gets hurt? What am I going to say? Oh, you're Filipino. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I'm going to take care of that. She'll use her uh, Phil health insurance. We'll go see the doctor. We'll go to the hospital. But there's still going to be a bill to be paid. You're going to let somebody that you're uh, having a relationship with and that you brought into your home and that you've been taking care of and they've been taking care of you, you're going to let them suffer? No, you're going to take care of it. Because I believe most of my audience are decent human beings and they wouldn't let their partner suffer. So I hope you would have an emergency fund for not just you, but for the family that you brought in. If you're single by yourself, I think you can live a little bit more loosey-loosey, less caring. But if you're bringing a girl into your life and she has kids or no kids, you're responsible. And you know what the trade-off here is. Our money, our finances, we're responsible. We can afford these things. We're supplying the resource of, of rent, Food, income, that's our job. We're the suppliers. We're the, we're, the, we're the guy who takes care of everything. And she's giving you herself. And I'm not talking sexually. She's giving you herself emotionally and physically, yes. But emotionally, and she's taking care of you. There's not a guy here who has a good girlfriend who hasn't been sick and that girl's sitting by his side making sure he, he gets better. They worry more about you than you worry about them. So take care of them also. So I'm going to end this just hoping that all of you got something out of this. I know I vented for quite a bit. Not into the exact amount, dollar amounts, what things cost. But it's the in general. You know in your head what you need. Your guy at home, you'd like a nice, comfortable bed, or you can sleep on a hard floor. I don't know. Everybody's different. You like to eat steak. Other guys like to eat potatoes. You're vegetarian. You need Australian beef. Everybody's lifestyle is different. When you fantasize coming to the Philippines, you know what you're fantasizing about. Is it the girls? Is it the lifestyle? Is it both? I hope you leave a comment about all this below. Hope you like this video and subscribe to my channel. I have a few things to vent about. We're taking a trip to Cebu and I'm hoping that I'll be able to put some of it down on paper that I've been thinking about. Take a vacation from my vacation here. 
I want to know your opinions on matters. What do you think about startup money? What do you think about how much percent should your budget be of your income? Should it be 70% of your income should be your budget? 90%? All of it? And do you have an emergency fund? And what amount do you think is the right amount to have for an emergency fund? I'm throwing the number 10,000. But I tell you, those with 20 feel a lot better and sleep well. Thanks for watching. Until next time.